As a preteen, when I was diagnosed, I didn't fully understand why I had gotten cancer. Initially, I felt that I was being punished for being bad and didn't know what it was that I had done. I was afraid if people knew that I had been sick, they would not want to be my friend anymore. As my treatment neared an end, I began to have morbid thoughts. I started seeing Dr. Hankin and began discussing how I felt about my treatment. After seeing her, I began to come to terms with my illness and feel more comfortable with myself. Even though I'm away at college now, speaking with her is still comforting and something that has changed my life drastically. Each year at Children's Hospital Oakland, about 100 children are newly diagnosed with cancer. Um, younger children just developmentally can't understand the, the concept of cancer. They just know they're sick um, and there are lots of issues related to that that are, that are very age dependent in terms of um, children thinking that getting cancer is their own fault. Um, or that it is the fault of someone else in their family. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you want to give her a poke? No gloves. No, no gloves. No gloves. Luckily, though, for families at Children's Hospital Oakland, the Psychology Oncology Program, which was established in 1998 and funded by a grateful family, is available to give pediatric cancer patients and their families the essential support they need during this difficult time in their lives. The program currently supports, free of charge, more than 300 families from the Greater Bay Area and Northern United States. Before the Psychology Oncology Program, or POP, was established, the emotional and psychosocial support for these children and their families had to be provided by the doctors and nurses who were treating the children. But with advances in cancer treatment and increased numbers of children surviving a cancer diagnosis, they soon realized the need for more specialized and focused help. Well, I am a psychologist that, here in oncology at Children's Hospital in Oakland, <laughs> and we provide quite a breadth of services, including individual family therapy, uh, play and art therapy. We also include some work with families whose children have um, passed away, which is called bereavement therapy, as well as helping integrate school kids back into school when they return after some treatment. Dr. Hankin um, really helped my, me and my entire family kind of go through the whole process. And she was there from the very beginning, like when I first found out, till, the very, like, till after I was in remission. Um, I would continue to see her. And she just really slowed down the whole process for me and really made me um, kind of take it every, like one step at a time and um, just not be not look too far into the future and just kind of like focus on what was going on at the at that point and so I didn't so I didn't have to worry about the future or anything and it just made me focus on my family and what I was going through at that moment and I think that really really helped. Well I felt really angry and mad and sometimes really sad because I was really depressed and I just didn't want it to come to me. Now Dr. Oren helps me with um, just normal things with regular life and with school and my friends. And... Well, I thought it was like a really, really bad thing at first, but then the, um, then Pam, she told me that it was just um, um, not really something big that I had to worry about. I think the psychology oncology program is one of the most important programs um, that the hospital can offer kids with cancer. It helps kids um, deal with a devastating um, event in their life. It helps kids with cancer, their families deal with a devastating event in their life. Um, without the psychology oncology program, um, I don't know where we would be at right now, mentally. Um, I know that Sydney um, physically would be 
okay because she is okay now. Um, but without the psychology oncology program, I don't know if we could be as strong as we are now. So when my sister Vanessa was diagnosed with leukemia, um, my family was mostly focused with her and I felt left out a lot because I was young and confused about what was going on. And that's when um, my mom introduced me to um, Dina, a talking doctor, so I can talk about the things that I was feeling and like stuff that was going on with school and like the confusion about my sister's diagnosis, I could talk to her about it. The impact on the whole family is just huge. Having a child diagnosed with cancer is the only way I can describe it. It's like having a bomb dropped into the centre of your family and the shockwaves from it just radiate out and take everybody down with it. That's how it felt to us anyway. The stress on the whole family was significant. Um, you find that everybody handles the stress differently, which in itself can cause more stress. Certainly my husband and I have very different ways of dealing with it. Dealing with our grief, with our fears, with our worries. Um, and then the other children, we have two other little girls, and um, for them, you know, it was the loss of their mummy, who was in hospital all the time with their sibling for weeks on end. Um, you know, their fear that their sister might die because she was so severely ill, but at the same time, they also suffered jealousy and um, felt isolated um, because everybody was giving their attention to Lauren and um, they even expressed that at some point they, they sometimes felt like nobody cared or loved them anymore despite the fact that we tried to to help them with that that was how they were feeling so it was significant because my brain tumor um, I have a lot of memory problems and it would be much easier just to um, go by my notes I was diagnosed with a brain tumor um, at age 10. At that time, there were no psychology programs at Children's for Kids with Cancer. Um, going back to school was really hard for me. Uh, for the first few years after I was sick, I stayed busy with follow-up at the hospital, as well as school activities and sports. By the time I was in high school, it became evident that it was taking longer and longer to complete my work. I had problems recalling things I read and could not organize my thoughts. Taking tests sent me into a panic. As much as I tried to keep up, I couldn't. It was really devastating to accept that I was not normal. I hated school and didn't feel like I fit in with my classmates. After high school, I got a job that worked with my disabilities, and I took classes at a junior college. Because I couldn't keep up mentally and physically, this led to more frustration and depression. I isolated myself and withdrew from most things. Finally, I got to a point where I didn't want to go on with my life. This is when I met Dr. Hankin four years ago. She has literally saved my life. I have learned ways to cope with my depression and the issues I face on, on, my, on a daily basis. Talking with her helps me put things in perspective. Now I feel more in control. One of my biggest roles um, here in the POP program is to work with a Spanish-speaking population. Here at Children's Hospital, I believe about 60% of the people we treat are uh, Medi-Cal patients and a great majority of them are Spanish-speaking patients. Um, I am lucky enough to be bilingual in Spanish, so the majority of my patients are Spanish-speaking. And I work, again, with the patients, the siblings, and parents in those entities. Another one of the things that I do is provide bereavement support um, to patients, parents of patients who have died. Um, and this is one of the most rewarding and challenging aspects of this job, is to talk with parents and or siblings of a patient who has died. And then finally, I work in the school reintegration realm, which is assisting the patients um, reintegrate back into their school setting once they are done with treatment. Oftentimes, the treatment for um, cancer can lead to some cognitive difficulties down the road, 
and one of the things I do is work with the school to ensure that these children are tested and are placed properly in a classroom at school. I want him to be able to have somebody else from me or my husband who can listen to him just without any judgment or any how can I say um, presumed ideas is that is there a huge word like that so that um, he can freely talk about how he is feeling about his past experience and I hope it's gonna stay past this of, of his treatment and for us living life after cancer's treatment is like um, trying to pretend that you have a normal life um, with having some kind of hidden monster hiding in your closet and you just cross your fingers that those monsters will just never ever come back and you know, um, in a way, during the treatment, you have medical staff, nurse, everybody, protocol to follow, so you know where you're going. But after the treatment, it's in a way another unknown journey that you are forced to take. And it's just hard sometimes when the only thing that you can do is cross fingers. And so, I'm just so thankful that um, there's an oncology psychotherapist at Kai's clinic. I know um, it will help him greatly to grow up to be a great normal guy. As you can see, this program is far-reaching in its breadth of services and the number of families it supports. Sadly, the funding from the Grateful Family came to an end in June of 2008 due to the economic climate, and now the program is seeking funds to help keep it going. Thanks over the years, and anger fills our tears. What happened to the sun? But I know. to me for a reason and that reason is that it would make me understand more about life and how I could help other people with their situations with cancer. Um, without this program I um, wouldn't have been able to come out as strong or stable of a person as I am today. Every time I read